Hi friends, welcome back. Today we are going to be prepping some easy meals to have on hand in the freezer. So I am going to be starting by just pulling out some meat that we're going to be using in some breakfast options. So we're gonna be starting out with that today. And then we are also going to be making some dinners, some snacks, as well as some cookies. I'm gonna share with you my favorite way to prep cookie dough. First things first, I am going to be getting our oven set. We are going to be setting it to um, 400 and we are going to get some bacon cooking. So the first thing that we're going to be prepping is some bacon. Today we're going to be making some breakfast sandwiches as well as some breakfast wraps to have on hand in the freezer. And to cook my bacon, I prefer to do it in the oven. I find that to be a little bit less messy and it gives a more even result. So I'm just going to lay this down on a baking sheet. Now you could line your baking sheet with either parchment paper or tin foil. However, I just put the bacon directly on the baking sheet. And then we are going to bake this for about 15 to 20 minutes. This bacon that I'm using today is a little bit thicker cut. So if you're using something that's a little bit thinner, you might want to just check it a little bit earlier. All right, our oven is preheated. So we're gonna get our bacon in. And get that timer set for I'm gonna do 20 minutes. Since I'm using the stoneware, it takes a little bit longer to bake as well. Now I'm just going to get my cast iron nice and hot before I get my breakfast sausage on here. And we're going to be using the sausage for the breakfast sandwiches that we're making today. So typically I like to make my own breakfast sausage, but the store was out of ground pork. So I just got some pre-made patties and I'm flattening them out quite a bit because as we cook them, they are going to shrink up and I want this to cover as much as possible of the bread. If you do want to make your own breakfast sausage, I will leave my recipe that I like to use in the description box down below. All the recipes and the instructions for cooking will be in the description box down below, as always, for what we're working on today. The timer for the bacon just went off. It needs a couple more minutes. So that is finishing up as well as the breakfast sausage. And while I'm waiting for that, I am going to be prepping our buns that we're using today. So we are going to be using some sourdough buns and then some brioche buns. I just have these on hand left over from a barbecue. So I want to get these used up. So I figure we might as well use them for the breakfast sandwiches. You could also use English muffins, you could do croissants, just bread, whatever you prefer, but we are going to use these today. And I'm going to start by getting them sliced and we're gonna get them toasted. So to make this quick and easy, I have another baking sheet here and I am just going to get these sliced in half and I'm going to face them up and we're going to put them under the broiler. And that is the bacon. Bacon is done. So I am going to let this cool and we're going to drain off some of that fat. Now I'm just changing the settings on here to broil 
and I'm going to get in our buns and have them on the top rack there toasting and we're just going to watch those really carefully. Now some of these buns got a little bit more toasty than I typically would prefer, but I did what you're not supposed to do and I walked away from the broiler, so don't do that. Um, but they'll be just fine. So I am going to get our eggs prepped and then we are going to start assembling these. So I have the oven preheating to 325 and I am going to crack 10 eggs into a bowl and I'm going to whisk them really well. We will add some salt and pepper and then I'm just going to pour this into a 9 by 13 baking dish. Our chickens are on strike right now. Well, not all of them. I guess we're getting a few eggs a day, but I knew I wouldn't have enough to do this freezer cooking today. So I had to pick up some at the store for the first time in a few years. So that was quite sad. So just a little bit of pepper. A little bit of salt. And we will get that whisked up. Now you could just fry these up on the stovetop. However, I find that whisking the eggs gives a better texture since we are freezing these and just doing them all in one go in the oven saves a lot of time as well. All right, that is ready to go. I'm going to get some of that bacon grease into a nine by 13 pan and we'll get these in the oven. I'm going to check those after 15 minutes. As the eggs finish cooking in the oven, I am going to get some condiments onto our buns here. So I'm doing homemade mayonnaise on one side. I'll leave my recipe in the description box down below if you want to give it a try. It's super easy to make. And then I'm also going to be doing our homemade tomato jam on the other side. If I run out of this jar of tomato jam, I think I'm going to grab a jar of my curried tomato jam. I think that would be really good on these as well. But you could do just about anything that you desire. I think pesto would be great as well. Now I'm doing these all just for Talon today, so these are obviously not gluten free. But if you wanted to do them gluten free, you could definitely do them with just some gluten-free buns or English muffins, gluten-free bagels, whatever you can find. All right, I am just gonna have enough for these, so I'm not going to be opening the curry jam. I just want to try and use up one thing at a time in the fridge. All right, so the eggs are all done. I'm gonna get this cut up and then we're gonna start assembling. So first goes the egg. I <laughs> did not do the best job at cutting these evenly. Now 
Next step is cheese. I have some leftover sliced cheese as well. So I'm going to be putting a slice of that on top of the egg and then we will add the meat. So I've got my bacon and sausage. As you can see, the sausage did shrink down quite a bit. So four are going to be sausage breakfast sandwiches, and then the other six are going to be bacon. I'm just breaking a piece in half for each. And then we are just going to close these up and I'm going to be wrapping them in some parchment paper and then we will put them in either a baking dish. I'll see if I can fit them into a nine by 13 baking dish with a lid or we will just pile them into a couple freezer bags. So I was able to fit all six of the bacon into one nine by 13 dish. I have a ton of these nine by 13 dishes and then also eight by eight uh, square pans with the lids. So I am going to just label all of these. I know these are all the bacon, put a B and then these four sausage. I am going to grab one of the um, eight by eight dishes and I'm going to try and fit all of those in there Save a little bit of plastic by not having to use the freezer bags All right kitchen is all clean and we are ready to get started on our next recipe and we are going to be doing the breakfast wraps so I'm gonna pull out everything that we need for that and We are going to be doing some veggies in there eggs of course some cheese and then either bacon or chorizo So I'm just going to get some onion diced here and we are going to be doing onions and shishito peppers in our egg scramble. Now the shishito peppers are frozen from the garden so they are prepped and ready to go. So I'm just going to get this chopped up and we'll get them sauteing. All right, so I'm just gonna get this pan heated up here and we are going to add in some of that leftover bacon grease. And this is gonna be what we saute our veggies in. So I just had a little bit of red onion left in the fridge, so I'm adding that in here. Then our white onion. And I have some shishito peppers from the garden. This was a recommendation from one of you. I'm sorry, I don't remember your name, but to add shishito peppers to eggs, and I hadn't done that before, 
and it's become a new favorite of mine. So I froze a bunch so I could use them in eggs throughout the fall and winter. So we're just going to let that saute for a little bit and once everything has softened we are going to add in our eggs. So I'm going to get to cracking our eggs. We're going to be doing, uh, let's see, only five breakfast burritos or wraps this morning. So with that I'm going to be doing I think 15 eggs, so about three eggs per tortilla. I'm keeping the eggs really simple today. I'm just going to do a little bit of salt and a little bit of pepper, but you could also do some smoked paprika and some ground sage. That is really good as well. We're just going to add in our eggs and then we'll start assembling. Okay, so I have some bacon. I also have some chorizo over here that I had cooked yesterday um, left over in the fridge. So we are going to use some of that in a few of the breakfast wraps and then we're gonna use bacon in the others. As I mentioned, I am only making these for my husband. Um, if I was making them for myself, I would use the Siete burrito tortillas. Those ones have been the best gluten-free tortillas that I've found. I do find that with them, you need to um, heat them up before you try and roll them so they don't crack, but they are the best tasting and they hold together the best of any that I have found so far. So I'm starting out with some cheese and some of this bacon and then we're going to layer in the scrambled egg mixture and get this rolled up. And as I finish them, I'm just going to move them to the side. And then we are going to wrap these each in parchment paper, just like we did with the uh, breakfast sandwiches. And then I'll put those into a baking dish as well for the freezer. Now, when Talon goes to eat these, he will probably have them with salsa. If I was making this fresh, I would put the salsa right inside, but I don't want them to get soggy while they're reheating, so we are just going to leave that out for now. So here's the finished product. 
we are going to get these wrapped up into some parchment paper. I'm going to label them and then we'll put them into one of those covered nine by 13 dishes and I will freeze those once those have fully cooled. I've just finished another quick clean of the kitchen and we are going to move on to the last breakfast slash snack item that we're going to be prepping today. Now, this is something that I do quite often and I will do it a couple different ways and that is frozen smoothies. So you can either just add all of your ingredients into pint or quart jars and that way you have dump and go smoothies ready to go in the freezer. You just add it to the blender, add your liquid of choice and then blend it up However, probably my favorite way to do this is by making up a big smoothie and then just dividing it between pint jars and having that ready to go in the freezer. And then we will just pull one of those out either the night before or even the morning that we want to have one and let it thaw for a few hours. And I'll just do that in the fridge and then it's ready to go. So super easy. Now I realized this morning that I'm out of protein powder. So the one that we're going to be making today is going to be pretty low protein. So when we have this, I'll serve this with some extra protein. You could either mix in at the time of serving some protein powder or collagen. I would probably do this with some hard boiled eggs. So in today's smoothie, we're gonna keep this really, really simple. I'm just gonna be doing a peach smoothie. So I'm gonna fill up my blender with peaches. Typically I like to add some spinach in here, but I don't have any spinach on hand at the moment. Okay, might as well finish them off. I'm gonna be adding in some bee pollen. making a mess as always and some chia seeds and then we're just going to top that off with some milk This isn't something that I ever really measure. So what I do is I will just fill my blender up with any fruit and vegetables that I wanna use and then I top that off with milk just to cover it. Now these peaches are super sweet. So I'm not gonna to need to add anything but you could add a little bit of raw honey if you needed to or some bananas to sweeten it up. All right, this is ready to go. So I'm gonna grab some wide mouth pint jars out and we're gonna get them filled up. So again, you're gonna wanna leave quite a bit of space, probably like an inch and a half of head space because it is going to expand in the freezer. That's another reason why you don't wanna use regular mouth.
Now I'm just going to loosely apply my lids and then we'll get these in the freezer and once they're fully frozen, I will go back through and tighten them. I don't know if you'll be able to see, but on the ball jars, there actually is a fill line for if you're going to freeze. So just follow that. Next up, we're gonna start on some dinner options. So we're gonna be making some frozen pizzas. And the first step in that is going to be prepping the dough. So I'm gonna be doing that. And then once our dough is rising, we're gonna prep all of the toppings so we have that ready to go when the dough is ready. Now, the recipe that I'm gonna be using for my pizza dough today is a gluten-free recipe. I recognize that most of you are probably not eating gluten-free, so you should be able to do this with just about any homemade pizza dough recipe, or you could even buy you know, prepped pizza dough at the store, add your toppings, and put them into the freezer as well if you wanted to go that route. Now, if you are gluten-free and you're looking for a great gluten-free pizza crust recipe, the recipe that I'm using today is from a paid resource from a small business, so I'm not gonna share the full details of the recipe. I wanna respect that. However, if you're looking for awesome gluten-free recipes, I'll leave all of her information down in the description box below. It is by far the best gluten-free bread, pizza crust, cinnamon roll recipes that I've ever had and worth every penny. I think it's 15 or $20. If you don't want to shell out that money for it, I'll leave another great pizza crust recipe in the description box below. To be clear, I don't have any affiliation with the woman that created this all-purpose gluten-free dough recipe, but she has clearly put so much time into creating a resource with an all-purpose dough recipe that is phenomenal, and then testing out different ways to utilize that, how you need to adjust the recipe, so as someone who has been gluten-free for a very long time, that resource is worth every penny. So I'm just stirring together some warm water, a little bit of honey, and some active dry yeast, and we're gonna set this aside. Now we're going to mix together all of our dry ingredients. So I need some millet flour. some brown rice flour, and then we need some tapioca starch, and then we're just going to do some garlic powder and some salt. Now in a separate bowl, I'm just measuring out some ground psyllium husk. This helps to give the gluten-free dough a little bit of elasticity. So we're gonna be mixing that into our yeast mixture as soon as it's ready. Now I'm just going to whisk in the ground psyllium husk and we're gonna set this aside for five minutes and it is going to gel up. This has been sitting, so we're gonna be adding a couple eggs, some apple cider vinegar, and some olive oil. Now I'm just gonna get this all mixed up and then we will add this to the stand mixer with the dry ingredients.
Now for the sake of easy cleanup, I just have a piece of parchment paper here that I am dusting with some millet flour and then I will turn the dough out onto the parchment paper and we are just going to knead it for a couple minutes to make sure everything has combined well. Now I've just lightly oiled my bowl and I'm going to allow the dough to rise for about 30 minutes. The dough is rising, so while that's happening, I'm gonna get all of the toppings prepped so they're ready to go when we're ready to roll out the dough for the crusts. So we're gonna be doing four different pizzas today. I know that we're going to be doing a couple with some sweet chili date sauce as the base, and we're also going to be doing some with our homemade pizza sauce as the base, and I'm just gonna see what we have in the fridge to top these with. So I've got some bacon left over that didn't fit on the pan previously. So I'm just gonna cook this up in a cast iron skillet because I don't wanna turn the oven on just for a few slices of bacon. And we're going to put this bacon on one of the pizzas with the sweet chili date sauce. That is going to be really good. So for toppings, we're going to be doing some mushrooms, some jalapenos, some peppers that I have frozen in the freezer from the garden. We're going to do red onion, some of this rosette pork salami. It's just pork, white wine, garlic, green peppercorns, nutmeg, clove, and cinnamon. It is nitrate free and it is delicious. And then we'll have our bacon and I'll shred up some mozzarella. Our dough has risen beautifully, so I am going to cut this into four portions. We're going to be making four pizzas out of this recipe, and I'm going to dust some baking sheets and cutting boards, just something that can go into the freezer with some millet flour, and I'm gonna get my dough rolled out, and then we're gonna to get to topping. So these first couple pizzas I'm doing with the sweet chili date sauce from the date lady. This stuff is so good on pizza. So I just drizzled some on and I'm spreading it around and then we're gonna get our other toppings on. On these two pizzas, I am doing some mushrooms, red onion, jalapeno, and then mozzarella. And on one, I'm gonna be doing some salami. The other, I'm gonna be doing bacon. All right, these two are good to go. 
I shredded way more mozzarella than I'll need for these four pizzas, but I figured I might as well just do it all and have it ready to go in the fridge. Now I'm going to move these two to the side so we can work on the others. For these two pizzas, I'm using my homemade pizza sauce. We made that together, so I'll link that video in the description box down below. And we are going to be doing mushrooms, red onions, the salami, some peppers, and mozzarella. Those pizzas are all done, so I'm gonna get them downstairs into the freezers. We're gonna let those freeze on the baking sheets and cutting boards for a few hours. And then after that, we are ready to wrap them in either saran wrap or tin foil, put them back into the freezer so they're ready whenever we need them. Now, I have some cleaning to do here in the kitchen. It's gotten a little bit chaotic again. So I'm gonna get that done and then we are going to move on to some pesto meatballs. Well, it is the next day. Yesterday didn't exactly go as planned, so we're going to be finishing up our cooking today, starting out with the pesto meatballs. So all we're going to need for this recipe is two pounds of ground beef, two eggs, two thirds of a cup of pesto. This is the garlic scape pesto that we made together that I've had in the freezer. We're going to do some chili flakes and some oat flour. So I'm gonna be starting by grinding up some oat flour and I'm gonna probably end up grinding this entire jar of oats because we are going to need a lot more oat flour for the next recipe. So to make oat flour at home, all you need is a blender, some rolled oats, If you want this to be gluten-free, you do want to get certified gluten-free oats. So that's what I'm using today. And then I am just going to start this on low and then we're gonna slowly work up the speed until this is blended into a fine flour. that is ready to go. This is one of my favorite flours to use for gluten-free baking as well. So I'm just gonna get all of my ingredients here in my bowl. The two pounds of ground beef. Clean hands so I don't get ground beef all over everything. So next we're going to be adding our pesto. Again, I'm using my garlic scape pesto. And we're going to be doing two thirds of a cup of this. This is going to add so much good flavor to these meatballs. I'm just gonna finish off this container. I think I have just over two thirds of a cup. Next, we're adding some chili flakes. You could leave this out if you wanted do as little or as much as you prefer. Now typically I would season my meatballs with some salt and pepper but there's parmesan cheese in that garlic scape pesto and that's going to add some saltiness and the garlic scapes themselves are quite spicy so and we're adding the chili flakes so I'm not going to do any salt and pepper but if you wanted to add that you definitely could and then half a cup of oat flour and two eggs.
Again, we've got very clean hands and the easiest way to get these meatballs mixed together is just to do it with your bare hands. So that's what I'm gonna be doing. We're just going to get this all mixed together and then we're gonna start forming this into balls. Typically for my meatballs, I like to do part ground pork, part ground beef. But as I mentioned earlier in the video, our store was out of ground pork. So we are doing just ground beef today. Our pigs are not far away from butchering though, so soon we will have a freezer full of it. But you could also do ground chicken, ground turkey, whatever you prefer. And if you want to increase the nutrition in these, you can also add in some beef liver. I know that might scare some of you off, but if you do a small amount of it, like a quarter pound of beef liver to a pound of ground beef, you really cannot taste it and that really ups the nutrition in them. I just did not get any thought today. I'm using a two tablespoon cookie scoop to portion my meatballs and I'm just gonna fill up this baking sheet. We'll see if we need a second one, I think we will. And we're going to bake these. So you don't have to, you could just put them onto a baking sheet like this freeze them raw and then cook them when you go to serve them. But I like the convenience of having them all cooked, ready to go in the freezer. We can just cook up some pasta, heat up some of our home canned sauce, and we've got a really quick meal. Now these are ready for the oven and these are going to bake at 400 for about 20 minutes. So our meatballs are out of the oven. They smell fantastic. And while we're waiting for those to cool before we get them into the freezer, we're gonna get started on our cookie dough. Now this is my all time favorite way to prep cookie dough. In our house it's just the two of us and we really don't need a full batch of cookies Ever. So this way I can just prep a bunch of dough and we can have cookies whenever we want them without you know having a massive batch that we need to make. So we're going to make up our cookie dough then we're going to portion it out on a baking sheet, pop that into a freezer and then you can just pull out however many cookies you need and bake them from frozen. It turns out perfect every time. So today we're going to be making a oatmeal cookie. This is my favorite oatmeal cookie recipe and we're gonna be doing two variations of it. So to my stand mixer, I'm going to be adding a cup of softened butter and then we're going to be adding in one and a third cups of sugar and a half cup of brown sugar. And this is a double recipe. So after I get the base dough mixed together, I am going to split it up and then we're going to make our two different variations. Half cup of brown sugar, just lightly packed. And we are just going to get this butter and sugar cream together. All right, that's looking good. So we're going to be adding in our eggs. We are going to be doing two eggs and two egg yolks. So I am just going to get two eggs in there and then we will separate the whites from the yolks of two eggs and those whites we're just going to save in the fridge. one yolk and two and then a big splash of vanilla and then we'll get these mixed in there next up we're going to be adding in our oat flour so this is the oat flour that we just ground up and I'm doing two and a half cups of that. Oat 
flour is by far one of my favorite flours to use for gluten-free baking. It's so cheap, it's easy to make yourself, and it's just has the best results I find. So that is two and a half cups. And then we're going to be adding in our salt. So we're doing a half teaspoon of salt. For the butter, I typically use salted butter. That's just what I always buy, but you could use unsalted if you wanted. And a teaspoon of baking soda. Gonna get that mixed all together. And then we're going to add in our rolled oats. So we are doing two and a half cups of rolled oats as well. All right, so that is the base of our dough. Now, since I did that double batch, I am going to just split this in half and we're going to do two variations. So we're gonna be doing an oatmeal raisin and then an oatmeal chocolate chip. Now, I know most people are not big fans of oatmeal raisin cookies. I am not a big fan of raisins in general. However, I do like them in oatmeal raisin cookies. So that's the two that we're gonna be doing today. You could even just leave this dough just as is. It is delicious that way too. So for the stand mixer, we're going to be making a batch of oatmeal raisin in there. So I'm gonna add in a half teaspoon of cinnamon. And then some of our home dried raisins. Now I don't usually measure this, I just kind of go by what looks right. So we'll maybe do a half cup of raisins in there. And then we're going to add in some chocolate chips to the other bowl. I'm using mini chocolate chips. Probably about a half cup of those as well. And we're gonna get these mixed up. Again, I am using a cookie scoop to portion cookie dough out onto a parchment lined baking sheet. And these can be right close to each other because we aren't going to be baking on this cookie sheet. We're just going to be putting this into the freezer until the dough balls are completely frozen and then we can transfer them into another container or a Ziploc bag. And that way they won't get all stuck together and we can just pull out a couple at a time. So when you go to bake this, you are just going to bake about three minutes is what I have found longer than you would typically bake your cookie dough for. So you can do this with any recipe, as I mentioned, and portion it out and then just take the time and temperature that that recipe calls for, add on a few minutes and you can bake them right from frozen. Our cookies are all ready for the freezer, so I'm gonna bring those down and I'm gonna grab out those pizzas that we did yesterday and we're gonna get those all wrapped up. So I'm just gonna use a spatula to kind of loosen these off of the baking sheets and the cutting boards. And then I'm just gonna be wrapping these in some saran wrap and then we'll get them labeled.
And for the pizza, similar to the cookies, you're just going to follow the same baking instructions of if you're making the pizza fresh and you are going to add on a few minutes. So I'll have all of that information in the description box below. I'm just double layering this to make sure it stays nice and protected in the freezer. Awesome. So here's the final look of everything that we got done yesterday and today. So we have our pesto meatballs, our four pizzas, all packaged up now and labeled. We have our smoothies, all of that beautiful cookie dough, a bunch of breakfast sandwiches, and our breakfast wraps back there. So that wraps up this video. I hope this gave you a little bit of inspiration. As always, all of the recipes and the instructions will be in the description box down below. And thank you for watching. Thanks for spending the day with me. Actually, I guess the last couple days with me. And I will see you in the next video.